Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Monroe from Middlebury, working my way through the collector's tour here in the fall of 2024. I'm at the western end of the Uinta Mountains now in northern Utah, and this is Dust 3, one of the first collectors that I deployed back in late June of 2011. The other day I talked about how having a more than 10 year long record from these oldest collectors allows me to say things about average rates of dust deposition, um, how they vary from year to year, more than I could say if I only had one or two years worth of data. But on the other hand, having 10 years worth of data is, is really nothing when you consider geologic time. And it's a good question, you know, how has dust deposition across this landscape varied over the really long term, much longer than a decade, longer than a human time scale. To address that, I need to find some kind of archive, some record of dust deposition, which is essentially undisturbed, undisturbed by uh, surface processes, undisturbed by weathering. Um, the soil is not a good place to do that because the dust that lands in the soil is immediately begins to weather, it immediately begins to work its way in and mix through freezing and thawing. Uh, and burrowing of organisms in the ground and so on. But lakes are a good place in which to do this. Dust landing on a lake, sinking to the bottom, if the water is deep enough, it's just going to be trapped there, essentially, and is going to remain uh, more or less undisturbed. And the Uinta Mountains are, are famously rich in lakes. There's thousands of lakes here. And so several years ago, I did a project where we retrieved sediment cores from lakes located near some of these dust collectors with the goal of using the lake sediment records as a long-term archive of dust deposition. To make this work, I had to find something that was geochemically unique about the dust and geochemically distinct from the local material, the local rock, which would be the other source of material that would be washing into the lakes. And there are a number of ways to do this, but ultimately it turned out that the simplest approach was to just use a couple basic major elements. Calcium is far more abundant in the dust, as I've talked about before, how that fertilizes the soils here in the mountains. And aluminum turned out to be much more abundant in the local material in the watershed. So the ratio of calcium divided by aluminum essentially serves as a dust index. When that ratio is greater, when the number goes up, that means that's a time when there was more dust accumulating in the sediment. And when the ratio goes down, it's the other way around. There's more local material. So I analyzed the lake sediment cores, um, or sediment cores from a lake right behind the camera that was connected to dust three, from a lake near the dust four collector, which we haven't seen yet, from a lake near dust two, which we were talking about last week, and a lake that was near dust one, the original collector, which we also saw a few days ago. Looked at the geochemistry down to these cores, calculated the ratio of calcium over aluminum, and it turned out it's not constant. It varies over time, which if I'm interpreting the chemistry correctly, means that the rate of dust deposition, or put another way, the significance of dust in that lake sediment has changed over time. And even better, it changed over time in ways that were more or less synchronous between the four lakes at four different parts of the Uinta Mountains. That gives me confidence that I'm not just seeing some local fluke, something unique to that particular lake or its watershed. Rather, it must be um, more of a widespread phenomenon, which would be um, consistent with dust deposition. Ultimately, it looked like the middle part of the Holocene, the middle part of the current interglacial, say five, 6,000 years ago, was a time when the dust index was high in all these lakes, suggesting to me that dust deposition rates were higher than they, than they had been across the Uinta Mountains. That's kind of interesting because we know from other records that the climate here in the southwestern U.S. Was, was drier at that time. Put those two things together, maybe it's not surprising that there would also be greater rates of dust deposition, um, but it was still nice to see this signal so clearly in the lake sediment um, archives. So dust deposition rate has changed from year to year. I know that from my collector record, but dust deposition rate has also changed over, over centuries, over millennia in response to landscape changes, climate changes, and other things here um, in the southwestern U.S. So with that, I'm going to get to work on emptying dust three and seeing how much dust has accumulated in it since I was last here. Uh, uh, thank you for listening. 
I will see you at the next collector. Uh, and once again, thanks to the U.S. Forest Service and to the National Science Foundation for supporting the Dusk Squared project.